the verses, you will stay seated, and then during the chorus, you will stand up and sing. Proverbs 
five to six. Maybe I'll review this one with you guys too. So, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Heart? I guess heart? 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 Heart. Yes. Heart. 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 Lean, lean not on your own understanding, so you kind of lean to the side. And then in all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will make your path straight. I love this song. Okay, we can stand up and we can do it together. One, two, three, go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Thank you. 
then this time we're going to sing, we'll just do the hand motions and you can think about the words. So the reason why this song says that to die is to gain is because if you're a Christian, when you die, you get to be with Jesus. And that's better than everything in this world. That's what the song's about. So here we go. We're going to stand again. We're going to stand. And we're just going to do the hand motions. Just sing. One, two, ready, go. Hey, let's begin to study God's word together. Let's open with prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We love you. We thank you that we can worship you and open our ears and our hearts to hear from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been studying about the Bible from the beginning. We did the Old Testament. Now we're doing the New Testament. Now is the time we listen to God's word. So in the New Testament, um, we start with what are the first four books of the New Testament? Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very good. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, a quick overview. Imagine if somebody in your school comes to school, a new person, a new kid in school, 
comes to school and says, hey, everybody, I am God. Yes. What would you think? Oh my God. We think this person's kind of crazy, right? Who would say that they're God? In fact, you look at him, and he is just like a human. He has hair. He eats lunch with you. He looks and acts just like a human, but he says he's God. If a person comes and says they're God, you would think that that person would be able to do some things that will show that he is really God, or otherwise he's crazy. Well, the first four books of the, gospel, uh, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are called the Gospels. They tell us about Jesus. Particularly, they show that those books, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote those books in order that we would know that Jesus is God. Um, because we know that he's a man. He, everybody sees him as a man. The thing that we cannot see or prove uh, or people can readily believe is that he is also God. So when we talk about the uh, life of Jesus, we're not just talking about, well, you know, what did he eat for breakfast? What are his favorite sports? Those are things that we don't really need to know about Jesus, although we might be curious about it. Those are things that uh, when the gospel tells us about Jesus, it's with a theological point. That means they have a focus to tell us about God, particularly that God, uh, that Jesus is God. Now, Jesus came as a human um, because somebody has to pay for our sins. Why did Jesus have to come as a human? If God wants to save us, why doesn't he just come as God and say, well, I'll save you guys, I'll die, and save you guys. Why does Jesus have to be in human form? Why tell you? Because he needs to be, have human flesh and blood in order to be able to die a human death. So that he can die a human death to take the substitute, to take our place. To, in order to take our place uh, for the punishment that we deserve, he has to be a human being, die the same death that we would have died. For example, if you stole something from a store and you got caught, and that's a crime by stealing, and the judge said you have to go to jail, can you say, oh, judge, instead of me going to jail, can my goldfish go to jail for me instead? No. It has to be you as a human going to jail to pay for your crime. So Jesus says, uh, God says, I will love, I love you so much, I will pay uh, to satisfy God's justice. He will have Jesus die for our sin, die in our place, the death that we would have died. But because we're human beings, it has to be a human being who has to die. Does that make sense? In Hebrews chapter 2, 14, this is a, I'm teaching you guys things that people don't normally tell you. You know, people usually just tell you a Bible story, but I kind of want to just teach this to you. <laughs> Since the children have flesh and blood, which is us, we have flesh and blood, he, Jesus, too, shared in their humanity, shared in our humanity as a human, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. What that means is this. Who was the first people who sinned against God? Adam and Eve. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they listened to the devil, didn't they? When the devil tempted them and say, oh, God told you to do this? Well, you don't have to obey God. You don't have to stay away from that tree. Um, God told you not to eat? But it's okay. You don't have to listen to God. You can still eat from that tree. So Adam and Eve listened to the devil. He listened to the serpent. And when he, they listened to the serpent, they obeyed the serpent instead of obeying God. So Adam and Eve obeyed the devil instead of obeying God. Does that make sense? Therefore, the devil had power over Adam and Eve. And that because of God's judgment, they died. And in, we, in the same way, when we are sinners, because we are sinners, we are actually have obeyed the devil rather than obeying God. And we deserve to die. When Jesus came, the devil also tried to tempt him. Remember that? In the wilderness. They was led into the wilderness, and the devil came to tempt him. 
The devil tried to tell Jesus, oh, you don't have to listen to God. Just do what I tell you to do. And so did Jesus obey the devil? Of course not. We know that he did not. When he did not obey the devil, he obeyed God instead. This is exactly what it says. By his death, he break the power of him who holds the power of death. He did not obey the devil. Therefore, the devil had no power over Jesus. Does that make sense? But see, we, when we sin, we, the devil has power over us. I'm following what the devil tells me to do by disobeying God every day because I'm a sinner. So therefore, when Jesus did not do what the devil tells him to do, he broke the power of what the devil can do. So we know that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. Right? Does that make sense? He has to be human and he has to be God in order to break the power of devil that he does not obey the devil. He obeys God 100% of the time. That's why he's 100% God and 100% man. He proved that he is God by being able to follow God 100% and be a perfect man. Nobody can be perfect uh, except God. So therefore, he's 100% God because nobody can be perfect except God. He's perfect, therefore he's God. Actually, he is not able to obey the devil. God will, um, God always obeys himself, God. God will not want to um, do anything that is sinful against God. That proves that he is 100% God. He cannot disobey God. If, um, and that's why we are not God, because we cannot, we always disobey God. And that's why we are human. So God is, um, Jesus is 100% man, 100% human. So when he, how did that happen that when he comes down to, he comes down as a human? Now, you know, I want to explain to you this verse, because this is why we come to church. This is why we love Jesus. That's why when we say we want you to love Jesus or I love Jesus, why do you love someone that you don't see? Well, this verse, um, these verses are verses that I'm memorizing this week. And just like you who go to Awana, I also memorize verses. Uh, not as good as some of you, <laughs> but I'm memorizing these verses. I love this um, passage. Philippians 2, verses 6 to 8. It says, Jesus though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. That means even though he's God, he's 100% God, he did not um, come as God in the palace. You know this Jesus was not born in a comfortable place. He could have bought himself a big house, but he did not do that. But emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. He came as the lowest servant to die for us. He came as a human, yes, but couldn't he have been like a rich human and be, have a comfortable bed? No. Jesus took on himself the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself. He humbled himself by becoming obedient. He's obedient to God. To the point of death, even death on the cross. So Jesus did not say, well, I'll come to die as a human, but uh, I don't want to go to the cross. No, he obeyed God 100%. And that's how we know that Jesus is the only one who is qualified to save us. See, if I love you so much and I say, you know, Auntie Anna, I love you so much. Um, I'm willing to die for you. But God would say to me, I am not qualified to die for Auntie Anna because I'm a sinner myself. I have to die. I bear my own sin. I cannot bear somebody else's sin. Nobody is qualified to die for another person no matter how much I love you. Only a perfect human who does not have to bear their own sin can die for another human being. So he's the only one who's qualified to save us. He's also the one who's willingly came down as low as a servant in order to save us. And that's why we love Jesus. He's the one who saves us and willing to do that as God. Um, so let's, um, that's why we come to worship. That's why we love coming to church to worship God because of what he's done for us. Okay, let's, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that you um, love us so much that you save us and you 
came as a lowly servant that you did not count equality uh, with God a thing to be grasped. Lord, thank you that you love us so much, and we want to love you more. Help us to love you more each day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.